Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be covering how to set up the new Bipervisor exploit, the first public hypervisor exploit released for the PS5. Now it only works up to firmware 2.70, and I know there's not that many people out there who have a 2.70 or older system. So this is going to be quite niche, but I still wanted to cover it anyway, because it is pretty exciting for any of you guys that are lucky enough to be on this firmware version. So if we head into our settings, first of all, and we're going to head down to, of course, system, and we're going to make sure we go to system software update and settings and uncheck the download update files automatically and install update files automatically boxes. Make sure those are both unchecked. Then we're going to head into console information to check your firmware version. So after the dash here is your firmware version. So mine is 2.30. So you need to be on 2.70 or older in order to run this jailbreak, which is a really, really old firmware version, uh, which not many people are going to be lucky enough to be on. Okay, so now we're going to back out and head into our network settings. So we're going to scroll up to network. We're going to go to settings, set up an internet connection, use what method you normally use, whether you're using Wi-Fi or a LAN cable. I'm using a LAN cable here. We're going to press the options button. Our options does not actually bring up the advanced settings like it does in higher firmwares. So instead, you actually have to just press X on it and then you can go to advanced settings. And then here we're going to scroll down to DNS settings and change that from automatic to manual and then enter this IP address as the manual primary DNS. So 62.210.38.117. That is what you want to enter in there and click done and then click OK to apply that. And this is using Nomadic's DNS server which will block all connections to Sony servers to prevent you from accidentally updating uh, your firmware. So it'll keep you on that older firmware while being connected to the internet. And it should also redirect the user guide page over to Echo Stretch's host. So you should get this security prompt. If you click yes, it will redirect the user guide over to ES7IN1.site, Echo Stretch's 7-in-1 host. So that is what you're looking for right there. If it doesn't redirect you here, you could try signing out of your profile and signing back in and then try and access the user guide again. If the page still doesn't load, then you might be unlucky enough to have an internet service provider that blocks third party DNS servers, in which case you will not be able to use Nomadic's DNS and you'll have to change your DNS settings back to automatic again. And then from there, just access the normal user guide page and you can actually navigate through the normal user guide page by clicking through a bunch of links to playstation.com slash help. And then from there, you can navigate and find a link that takes you to, you know, PlayStation social media pages or PlayStation.net. From there, you can go to the social media, find a, a link to YouTube. From YouTube, you can use the sign in feature to access privacy and terms. And then from there, you can click the little Google link in the top left hand corner, which brings you to another page. And then if you scroll down to the bottom of that page, you'll have a link to Google on the left. If you select that option, that will take you over to Google search and you can search for ES7IN1.site and then that will bring you over to this website here. So that's the alternative way to do it if you cannot use this custom DNS server. Okay, so once you're on this website, we're going to head over to UMTX option here and we're going to look for Idle Sauce's UMTX jailbreak. Now, it might be named something different. You're, what you're looking for is the UMTX version of Idle Sauce's host on this site. So we're going to select it here. And then we have the option to jailbreak. It will start caching the page automatically. Uh, and once it says cache is finished, you can go ahead and press the options button and reload the page until it says cache is up to date. And then we can run the jailbreak right here. Now, the good thing about being on a 2.x system or a 1.x system is that the jailbreak is very stable for these uh, older firmwares. So you're less likely to run into kernel panics uh, like you will on higher firmwares like 3.0 and higher. So there we go, as you can see, we are up and running, loading the elf loader. So elf loader.elf. And there we go, we've got spawning elf loader and it is up and running. And then we get the actual payloads that we can select. So there's a bunch of different payloads on here. The main jailbreak payload right now is by Provisor Hen. It might just be ETA Hen or Homebrew Enabler or something like that in future but that is the one we want to run right here, the fake package enabler. So we're gonna select that with X and it's going to prompt us here to enter rest mode and then resume. So we need to do that. So we're gonna wait for this message to disappear, give it a few seconds, and then we're going to enter rest mode. Now in the future, running this might automatically put the system into rest mode 
by itself. Otherwise, at the moment, we have to do it manually. So we're just going to press the PS button here uh, to bring up the menu. And then we're going to scroll along to power and we're going to enter rest mode. So you want to make sure it actually does enter rest mode fully. So, you know, it starts flashing white for a few seconds. You want to wait for it to go solid orange, not blinking orange, but solid orange uh, LED on your PS5, which can take a few seconds. And then once it's done, we can press the PS button on our controller to turn it back on and recover from rest mode. So the way this whole hypervisor exploit works is that we need to actually uh, enter rest mode in order to get it to trigger properly. So here we go. So once we're back up and running, we can log back in. And now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go into settings. We're going to go to the user guide page here. Open up the user guide. Do the same thing as before. Go back onto that same idle sauce version of the exploit. And then in this case, because we've recovered from rest mode, the jailbreak is still running. So we don't need to re-jailbreak it again. Instead, we can just run the second option here for WebKit only sender which will give us the payloads that we need. So we'll select that option so that we're not rerunning the jailbreak a second time. It will just bring up the payload section and then we're going to run Bypervisor Hen again. So I'm going to press X on that. Now on the second time you load this, it should not give you any notification about entering rest mode. There may be a future notification that comes up saying Hen has been enabled or something like that. But for now anyway, we don't get any notifications. If we switch back over to our computer here, we can actually get some stuff installed for testing. So one of the things I recommend installing is that IdleSauce has a web browser shortcut that will take you automatically to the exploit page so that you don't have to go through the user guide in future and use the custom DNS to access it, especially if you cannot use that custom DNS and you have to navigate through all of the different pages to get onto Google search to access it. This is much easier. It will just be an option on your home screen and you can select it and it'll automatically open up the browser and take you to that page. So we're going to want to make sure we install this. Again, it may have a different name in future, but I'll leave the links to it down in the video description. We're also going to do some tests. So I have Minecraft, a fake package PS4 game, and I also have PT, of course, the classic, to make sure that the homebrew enabler is actually running and that we can run our fake package games. So all we need to do is pop these on a USB drive. So I have a USB drive right here. Just got to make sure that the USB drive is formatted in either XFAT or FAT32 format, preferably XFAT. So there we go. We've got those package files on the root of the USB drive. Don't put them inside any folders, just put them in the root of the drive. And then from there, we can eject our drive here and plug it into our PS5. Okay, so back on the PS5, so I can press the PS button to exit and we should be good. So from here, we can scroll down to our debug settings, which is enabled when we first run the jailbreak. We can go into our debug settings. We can go to game. We can go click OK to that message and then go down to package installer. And here we have all of the package files that we can install. We definitely want to install our uh, web browser shortcut, but I'll just say install all to get all of these package files installed onto the system. I recommend plugging in the USB drive to one of the back USB ports because they run at a higher speed. They're higher speed USB ports than the front one. So plug your USB drive into the back and you might get it to install the package files faster. So there we go. All three of those package files were successfully installed. Now we need to see if we can run them. So the web browser shortcut is in the media section. So you can select that and it will automatically take you to the jailbreak page. So that way when you reboot the PS5 and you want to run the jailbreak again, you can just hop into the shortcut and run the jailbreak here instead of having to use the user guide uh, from now on. I still recommend keeping the DNS server on because it will also block uh, system updates, which is definitely a useful thing. So as you can see, we have a few other things installed here. We've got our Minecraft, we've got PT. Let's try and run PT, make sure that runs. Make sure everything works. Now, with this early version of Bypervisor Hen, there does seem to be some issues running fake packages at the moment, PS4 fake packages, where you get that please wait and it gets stuck for a while. And I have found that certain games, particularly games that are games that normally will not run on older firmwares like this, that have uh, backported updates, uh, those backported updates seem to cause problems and a lot of those games are not working right now. So there's definitely very early stages. There's still some jankiness uh, to this whole setup. But as you can see, we have got PT running here. 
So as you can see here, PT is running as expected. It's all working. So no issues with that game specifically. And also I can run uh, another game that I found that works is CTR Nitro Fueled. I actually have a backport update installed for this game as well. And you'll see that when I try and run this, we get the please wait that pops up for a while. So this is some of the issues I'm just trying to point out here with this version at the moment. I'm sure a lot of this stuff will get fixed in time. But at the moment, you can see there definitely does seem to be some issues running, um, you know, like PS4 fake packages using this. So this full game here takes quite a long time to launch. We're stuck on please wait for a long time and then the please wait disappears. And then we're still just stuck on the loading screen as if something might have froze. However, there we go. You can see it's now it's now running. So you can see we've got this particular game running, but there's a lot of games that are not working right now. Typically ones that do have backport updates that are required. So one thing you have to bear in mind about this jailbreak because it's for such an old firmware version uh, is that the equivalent PS4 firmware is something like 8.0 or a little bit higher than that. So that is kind of like the equivalent PS4 firmware. So you actually need even older backport patches like the 6.72 backport patches or maybe the 5.05 backport patches, which will actually allow you to run newer PS4 games on these older firmwares for the PS5. So that's one of the issues that we have at the moment. And then of course, we also have the issue where a lot of these backport patches, even the ones that are for 5.05 and 6.72 are causing these issues where the game just gets stuck. In fact, one of the games that I can demonstrate this on right now is going to be uh, Dead Island 2. So this has a backport patch installed. This backport patch is supposed to work on 5.05 and 6.72 and so therefore it, this should run here on this PS5 um, but it doesn't. It just gets stuck and eventually freezes uh, at the loading screen here. So, so there's definitely still some issues with this Bipervisor Hen version that need to be worked out. And there's also slowdown issues where games, I'm noticing the loading times are a lot slower on this version with the Bipervisor Hen uh, whereas they should be a lot faster because they're using direct kernel patches with this hypervisor exploit compared to uh, other workarounds on higher jailbreaks with K stuff. But that's faster than this at the moment. So there's definitely a lot of improvements that could be made to the homebrew enabler. So I think we need somebody maybe like lightning mods to step in and make a proper hen version for the bipervisor exploit to you know, actually get it to its full potential. But anyway, that's how you get the bipervisor exploit set up right now for the PS5 on 1.x and 2.x firmwares. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.